I think the biggest thing with uh, competency-based education is it's not even necessarily the information or the facts that you learn in, through this. I think it's the skills that you learn uh, from being a practitioner of it. The initiative, the collaboration, the research skills, all those things are things that employers um, and colleges are looking for. Um, and they're things that students who leave the early college are proficient in. As a personalized learning strategy, a foundational concept of competency-based education, or CBE, includes having a student-centered approach to learning. I think a typically in a traditional school, you see a one-size-fits-all approach. I think schedules are often times rigid and set. I think conversations um, are more about what we're going to teach and how um, what it's more about what we're going to teach and not about how students learn best. Um, sometimes thinking about teaching in, a, in into the middle and the language is oftentimes from a deficit par paradigm. And in a CBE school environment, you see personalization at its finest. You see where students, uh, the instructional and classroom practices are meeting the needs of each and every student, that conversations are centered around student learning and the impact of what we are doing. It is all focused on the learner. The Regional Education Laboratory Southeast North Carolina CBE Research Alliance developed a CBE mastery framework that outlines learning elements that are critical to ensuring a student-centered approach. This begins with empowering students to have a voice in their education. The, one of the things that is most different from a traditional school is the amount of student voice and student choice that is in a competency-based um, environment. So the culture of the school has to be that students get a lot of uh, leeway to decide how they want to learn how they want to be assessed. Everything that we create, and we call them pathways, and in some places call them playlists, um, but we create them from, from the ground up. And so we embed different opportunities for students, whereas the practice might be everyone is practicing a skill. They'll have different opportunities to choose if they are a kinesthetic learner, they can you know, do something that you know with their hands. If they're a more visual learner or auditory learner, they have opportunities to choose what activity they think that they can learn best from um, within the, their pathway. For, for that learning target. Voice and choice is something that we value very highly. Um, like I mentioned, we have an entire course uh, during the day where students get to choose which class they go to. So that's, you know, something that we try to incorporate from the get-go of our innovation is providing them the opportunity to choose something that they learn every, you know, every day or every week or however often it may be. But in an individual classroom, as far as core classes and elective classes go, they're provided choice um, you know, even though they're not choosing the standards that they learn necessarily, they are choosing how they learn it. And since they all come to us with different levels of understanding, the teachers have become experts at differentiating for those standards. And so they use the rubrics to create different activities to help support students and scaffold in ways that they need and to provide extra enrichment for those students who are already coming to us with a lot of experiences and a lot of mastery already kind of behind them. CBE enables students to take control of their own learning by allowing them to be responsible for setting goals, tracking progress, and demonstrating mastery. So at the beginning of the year, you get a spreadsheet. Sometimes they edit the wording a little bit to make it easier to read, but as a list of state standards, the things that the state of North Carolina wants you to learn over the course of that class. Um, and so from there, it is your job to figure out like, hey, well, in civics and economics, I want to go learn about the three branches of government first. Um, or in math, to say, hey, I'm gonna go learn about quadratics first. Um, and then to take that initiative to make kind of your own plan of what you're gonna learn in that class and where you wanna learn it, or even how deep you want to uh, go into it. And the teachers are there to guide you through that process and if you're struggling with it, like I did my freshman year, they're there to help um, guide it out for you or to help plan it out for you. Um, and the teachers are also there as mentors and as um, guidance people as well. So if you get stuck on standards, say you're not getting quadratics uh, right off the bat, or you're confused even about the language of the target, 
Uh, they're there to answer your questions or even to help guide you through the material themselves. Uh, they're mentors in every sense of the word. Student ownership in a competency-based learning model is so critical because all of our work is about students and at Carroll we're hashtag team kids first. And so when students come into classrooms and they don't feel like there's a connection to what they're learning um, as it impacts their own personal lives within their social relationships or their family or their community or their future, then there's a strong likelihood that um, they're not going to be mastering as much content and making it applicable to their real lives. And so we choose a student leader of the day who's going to facilitate that question for the class. Um, they're going to talk through the attendance question, which just gets them open and talking and ready to learn. And then they have to problem solve through the warm up. And I sit back and I act like a student and they work through that process together. So they feel like they're in charge of the classroom in that moment. And they feel like they all have a say and I find that more students speak and more students um, are open during that time because there is another student leading the classroom for the first five minutes of class. Um, so it really does help the students feel like they are taking ownership and they are running the class and this class is student-centered. Educators must also recognize that learning can occur anytime, anywhere, and award credits for the mastery of competencies. But we do have like a lot of different club activities that can count towards your education and um, things that we do outside of school. We also have my learning, which is basically like learning about Kobe seven habits, about positivity, kindness and like different people in general. So anything that can apply to that outside of school, it even can um, help us in our education. So we also have a lot of extracurricular activities and we also try to incorporate like some type of engineering process or design thinking process into each one of our PBLs or projects is to have us get that experience. So the example that I could put was that I'm currently in an FLL team, first Lego League group, and I was actually a drone pilot. So I was actually piloting the drones when I, in our presentation. So that was something that I was like um, experienced with and how I now know what drones are and how I can work them. As educators and schools shift to a more student-centered approach, it is important to have an administrator that serves as a lead learner and models personalization. It also takes a principal or a school staff around you who is really supportive. I know my principal was always there to uh, um, help us think through some of the problems we were having as we were planning our differentiation for our students, as we were creating all of our pre and post assessments. She was there with us and that made a huge difference as she knew uh, the support we needed and just really thinking about how we can help. She was always there to talk through any problems that we had and just work it out with us. She wasn't ever just critical like, why isn't this working? She was there to help and that made a huge difference. So the way that you set the vision and create the culture in that in the school around that as a principal is um, you work as a faculty to teach students to become responsible for their own learning. Um, so, so we come together, we create a vision, but we use student voice and choice to do so. Um, and that impacts the culture of the school. And the overall culture of the school is that you see students who are excited about learning, who are curious about learning new things, and that they are responsible for the, their own learning. They know what, where they need to go and they know what they need to do to get there. Well, I say first and foremost, we communicate to our students each and every day that everything we do is about them. We talk with students, we conference with them so that not only um, are we learning about them, but to uh, enhance student agency so that students are learning about how they learn best and, um, and, and providing ways for them to um, have ownership. One of the things that I've done uh, with my fifth grade group is I try to start to have student conferences. So. Um, students were chosen to have conferences with the principal. They met with me one-on-one -on -one, talking about the goals that they've made for themselves and how they were progressing towards their goals, the different choices that they've made um, with the content, uh, with their win board, which stands for whatever I need. They have choices embedded 
uh, in that structure so that um, they're making choices to help them meet their goals. So during that time in those conferences, students are taking ownership by talking about their data, talking about goal setting and things that they need to do for themselves to continue to improve and to get better, but also celebrating um, their journey and all the great things that um, they've been able to accomplish this year. So that's been an exciting um, new thing at Shuford where I've been able to truly see how students are taking ownership of their learning. Educators, students, and parents have reported positive impacts from this more student-centered learning approach. Well, I think the biggest impacts that we have felt as we have transitioned to a competency-based learning model have been that we're a much more collaborative environment and student ownership and advocacy has been impacted directly. Students realize how important it is to leverage feedback to improve their learning. And they are taking more of an active role in communicating with their peers and their teachers and their families around what they have learned, what they have mastered, um, and what their objectives are moving forward. You learn and you are confident when you walk out of that classroom at the end of the semester or the end of the year that you mastered all of the skills that you need to be able to move forward. And that's the best thing about competency-based education is that it gives you the confidence that you need to excel. And once a parent sees that a student really is in the front seat of their own learning, we see a paradigm shift. And a parent goes from maybe being a little bit leery to a staunch supporter. Where has this been? And once that switch happens, uh, count on it <laughs> always being the expectation moving forward. For more information about CBE, including additional videos related to the CBE Mastery Framework, visit the RHEL Southeast website.